Good morning! My name's Jess. I'm here to give you five reasons why I don't personally use natural cycles or Daisy or Lady Comp. First off, sorry about the towel, I've got wet hair. So, natural cycles and Daisy might be good options for some people, but they're not good options for all people. Here's why. Number one, natural cycles and Daisy are temperature only methods of contraception. What you might not know is that your basal body temperature only rises after you've ovulated. So before you've ovulated, your temperature tells you nothing about your fertility status in real time. All it tells you is that you haven't ovulated yet. Any app or device that's using temperature only to tell you when you are fertile um, is basically relying on past cycles to predict what's happening in your future or current cycles. Um, the problem with that is that the human body is not a machine. You can and many women do ovulate earlier or later than usual. What so many women don't know is that modern fertility awareness based methods use two fertility biomarkers, temperature and cervical fluid. Um, the reason we do this is because prior to ovulation, your estrogen levels start to rise. So as the follicles in your ovary grow larger, your estrogen levels rise. And the great thing is that your cervix, which is the opening of your uterus, is affected by estrogen. Inside your cervix, there are small crypts that are affected by estrogen and they secrete a mucus called cervical fluid. Cervical fluid changes in consistency, volume, texture, appearance in the lead up to ovulation. So, cervical fluid is key. If you want to know in real time what your body is doing and whether it's gearing up to ovulate, your basal body temperature is not gonna tell you anything until after you've ovulated. Why is this important? Because you need warning at least six days warning before you've ovulated because if you're having sex then there may be sperm living in your reproductive tract and sperm can have a lifespan of up to five to seven days. Here's a little diagram that actually shows what I'm talking about. So you can see that um, with uh, rising estrogen levels the water content of your cervical fluid rises too and it changes from like sticky to creamy to egg white to watery and then it dries up again after you've ovulated and when we add this next little slide you can see that your basal body temperature only rises after you've ovulated again it's not a predictive biomarker it is a confirming biomarker it helps you to confirm that ovulation has occurred number two Temperature-only methods were superseded by the symptothermal method in the 1950s. Temperature-only methods of fertility awareness have actually been around since the 1930s. Natural cycles and daisy aren't a new invention. They haven't done anything crazy except put those temperature-only methods into app form. Our glorification of technology and our reliance on basal body temperature alone is setting us back like 70 years. So. While we have this idea in our heads that technology is amazing and it's a step forward, in this case, using temperature only is taking you a step backward. Number three, effectiveness and research. We look at the probability of an unintended pregnancy over 13 cycles of use, which is kind of like around about a year. Natural Cycles has an 8.3% probability of an unintended pregnancy with typical use. Daisy has a 2.7% probability of unintended pregnancy with typical use. And the Symptothermal Method has a 1.8% probability of unintended pregnancy with typical use. So we're talking about typical humans using these methods and, you know, making some mistakes, perhaps being a little bit careless, whatever. Um, to put that in real figures, if you had a group of 5,000 women over one year, 415 of them would be pregnant with typical use of natural cycles, 135 of them would be pregnant with typical use of daisy, and 90 of them would be pregnant with typical use of the symptothermal method. I don't know about you, but I know exactly which methods I don't want to be using after hearing those figures. 
Okay, so continuing with point number three, there are some issues with the research that DAISY and Natural Cycles have conducted. DAISY study that DAISY reference for a 99.4% perfect use um, effectiveness rate was not a clinical trial. So DAISY liked to say that they did a clinical trial. It's not. It was a retrospective survey. Um, which is not the same and it's not recommended to use a retrospective survey to provide perfect use figures for contraception. DAISY has actually been called out publicly by a senior research analyst with the Guttmacher Institute known as Chelsea Polis. Um, Chelsea Polis actually published a um, commentary on the DAISY um, retrospective survey results. It, it covered a range of things. I'll quickly go over some of them. Number one, the survey only included women who had used DAISY for 13 or more cycles. Um, it didn't include cycles prior to 13 cycles. And during that time, there were at least 10 pregnancies that did occur. Um, and they're not included in the results. Um, only 13% of the total invited women actually chose to participate in the survey. This brings up uh, concerns about selection bias. Um, number three, uh, DAISY only considered a pregnancy unwanted or unintended if the user actually reported that they had an unintended pregnancy. So DAISY has all of the data um, from the devices which would pick up if a user has an unintended pregnancy but they chose not to use that. They chose to instead wait for a user to self-report an unintended pregnancy and then they would go back and look at the data to check and cross-reference it. So they may have missed some unintended preg pregnancies that way. Um, number four, there was some ambiguous wording of the survey. So they asked women whether they were using DAISY to avoid pregnancy for family planning or both. Um, it's a little bit confusing for women to report their reproductive intentions because family planning sounds really similar to natural family planning and natural family planning uh, can be used as contraception. So it's really a little bit too ambiguous. Um, Number five, there was no mention of whether they excluded anyone who was subfertile. So that would include people who are breastfeeding, people who are postpartum, people who are uh, pre or perimenopausal. So those are some issues with the DAISY study. So the natural cycle study has also been called out for uh, some inconsistencies as well. So natural cycles uh, states a contraceptive safety that is based on a study of 22,785 women over 18,548 woman years. It's a lot of woman years. Um, so a few issues were, number one, there was a massive dropout rate. So 54%, that's over half of women who were using natural cycles, dropped out at the end of one year. <clears throat> number two, many of those cases of dropouts, there was no definite information as to why they dropped out and whether they were pregnant when they dropped out. Um, so they were actually classed by natural cycles as likely pregnant or unlikely pregnant or possibly pregnant. Now, when natural cycles went to calculate the effectiveness rate, they only used the likely pregnant group. So they left out the possibly pregnant group. Um, number three, in 47% of unplanned pregnancies, so that's in number terms, that's 603 unplanned pregnancies, sexual behavior was not known. So in these cases, natural cycles had no way of knowing whether the unplanned pregnancy was caused by risky sexual behavior, which would be user error, or whether it was caused by natural cycles errors. I'm gonna link below this video sources to the information I just told you about how natural cycles and DAISY have both been called out for research that might be a little bit lacking. Okay, so number four is marketing. One of my key issues with natural cycles is that their founder, Eleanor Berglund, was actually quoted as saying that the ideal user is a woman in a stable relationship who is planning to have children at some point and who would like a break from hormonal contraception ahead of trying. So it doesn't really sound like someone who's like really keen to avoid having a baby there. 
Um, there's also a quote from Christina Gemsel Danielson, who is a professor in obstetrics and gynecology at the Karolinska Institute and is one of the research scientists behind the natural cycle studies. So this research scientist who actually helped study natural cycles is quoted as saying that natural cycles is not a good option for women who absolutely want to avoid a pregnancy. Um, despite this, both natural cycles and Daisy are basically marketing really heavily on social media platforms where the uh, main demographic is young women who probably are at a stage of their life where they really do need to be avoiding a pregnancy. Daisy is continuing to market their device as 99.4% effective with perfect use even though there's currently um, a request in with the journal that they published their study for their study to be retracted due to errors in the way they calculated. They know that there are these issues, they're continuing to market their device as 99.4% effective. So the fifth reason why I don't personally use Natural Cycles or Daisy is because I genuinely don't believe that Natural Cycles and Daisy are promoting true body literacy. So because they don't choose to uh, promote cervical fluid um, as an important biomarker with their marketing, they're really keeping their users in the dark about how their fertility actually works. I genuinely believe that if a lot of these women knew that their cervical fluid was basically the only way to predict ovulation in advance of it happening, um, then a lot of these women would be choosing to track their cervical fluid. Um, in saying that, I also don't think that relying on a green light or a yellow light or a red light is true body literacy. You're not learning the information for yourself, you're relying on a little light to show up on a piece of technology every morning and you're not truly connecting with your body and with your cycle. Um, a lot of people are probably going to be a little bit annoyed about that because a lot of people will have found some level of body literacy through using natural cycles and daisy and that's amazing. All I'm saying is that there is another level of body literacy, one that provides you with a lot more information and can be really important, especially for those of you who are trying to conceive a child. And Natural Cycles and Daisy isn't letting anyone know about that. So that's number five um, as to why I don't personally use Natural Cycles or Daisy. Anyway, I hope this information is really helpful for you. If you have questions, please post them down below um, in the comments section. Um, at the end of the day, it's your body, it's your choice. So I hope that this helps you to decide what's best for you. I've got nothing but love for people who use Natural Cycles and Daisy and are happy doing so. Good on you. And I'm glad that you've found something that works for you. These are just the reasons why Natural Cycles and Daisy don't work for me personally. And I hope that it was helpful for you to hear my opinion. Thank you.